Hi guys, how's it going? So perhaps you have Google Earth where you're thinking about getting Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. What are the differences? Let's find out. If it's your first time to VR Essentials, very nice to meet you. We talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and VR educational entertainment. And a big welcome back, of course, to all our regular subscribers. There will be a special unboxing just for you at the end of this video because I need to thank you for something. But first, let's talk about the differences and similarities between Google Earth and Microsoft Flight Simulation 2020. Undoubtedly, both apps provide different kind of experiences. One of them, first of all, for example, Google Earth, you can actually use your controllers to move around while Whilst with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, you're going to need either a Xbox S controller, your keyboard and a mouse, or some kind of other accessory in order to be able to use it. While one app is more of a simulator where you can basically learn how to pilot an aircraft and the other is more like a free kind of play where you can go wherever you want, whenever you want kind of thing, they both offer something similar which is the fact that they're both about travel. You can use both of these apps in order to not just plan your future travels because of course now with COVID-19 things are a little bit different. It's a bit difficult for us to go to see different places but you can also reminisce, go back in time, see where you grew up or perhaps your parents or your grandparents can show you where they grew up and use these apps in order to have a really awesome immersive travel kind of experience. The first biggest difference between these two apps is the ease of play or the point of play if you wish. Because with basically Google Earth VR, all you have to do is go to Steam and download it from Steam directly on your computer. And then when you launch Steam, Steam VR and then Google Earth, right away you'll be inside. There's nothing much to do. You can go to your settings which are extremely simple. We can change for example the background music or your comfort and all these kind of things. I love the fact that with Google Earth I really have that control in order to be able to go wherever I want whenever I want. So basically what this means is I can just stop whenever I want. There's nothing moving around. I can just be there. I can descend all the way to the ground and then just look around and you know it's just a fantastic experience. And the other thing that's really awesome about Google Earth is their street view function. Street view is basically a tool that enables you to see around pictures that have been stitched up by a Google vehicle that's been driving around using a VR 360 camera. What's really funny sometimes when you're doing a tour because you can go on tours is that some of the pictures were let's say dated 2020 and then other pictures are dated 2017 because they came back to continue the tour three years later. So that can be quite interesting sometimes. Now it is true that the closer you get to the building, if we were to compare for example the graphics between Google Earth and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, they're not as detailed as Windows Microsoft Flight 2020. By the way, if you do want to learn how to use these apps, do go and check out the links in the description below the like button because I did some tutorials with some step by step guide there that might be useful to you. So do go and check those out. When you descend closer and closer towards buildings with Google Earth, you'll notice that a lot of the details are lost, which is where Street View comes in and then provides you the actual immersion as to what the actual place looks like. However, with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, when you're flying really, really low, you know, all the way so close to the buildings that you could almost touch them with your wings kind of thing or your, your wheel. I mean, don't do this in real life, of course. You know, the detail is so crisp, so sharp, the shadows, the lighting, everything works so well that you can really recognize the place. Even though the graphics of Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 are of course much better than Google Earth, even when you go up into the sky, maybe 50 meters or 200 meters up in the air, you know, to the buildings, the Google Earth graphics are actually pretty good. I mean, the further and further you go away, you see all the images rendering and you see the terrain rendering. You could really make sense of absolutely everything and the immersion is really there. So they really have paid attention to detail. But where Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 take it really to another level is the fact that you have the clouds, the volumetric clouds which you can change in the graphics. They have so many different things going on. The colors aren't as saturated as well. So it really provides that kind of vertigo effect, especially when you're really, really high compared to Google Earth where it seems a little bit more flat. Don't get me wrong, it's so much fun when you're in space in the universe and you can see the Milky Way and then you're just rotating the Earth there with your wand. I mean, it's a fantastic experience. And also the fact that you can change the sunlight on the fly with your controller. So one minute it's golden hour, the other it's nighttime, the other is daytime. 
That's pretty fantastic with Google Earth as well. The other big difference between Google Earth and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is that it's a much more developed app compared to Google Earth. For example, there is actually a marketplace inside of the app where you can download more maps so that basically you can fly, take off from various different places or land in other different airports. You can also purchase more planes and all these kind of things. The settings of the app itself are much more complicated. They dive deeper into the actual gameplay. It's gonna take you much more time to play around, experiment with all the different things. And by the way, if you do need any assistance, do go to the link description below the like button because I actually uploaded a best guide to the best graphics using Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. As I mentioned before, the most immersive part of the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is the fact that you are actually inside of an aircraft. And these feel really realistic, which I think really is going to contribute towards people who perhaps aren't so comfortable in being in the plane to use this simulation to teach themselves or trick their brain, if you were, to become more used to actually being inside of an aircraft. Because when you put on your VR headset and you're inside of the cockpit, it really looks so real. All the graphics are fantastically made, the materials, the textures, the sharpness. I mean, it's just, wow, the reflections also, and the refractions when you're looking outside through the window, it's just amazing. The little details, for example, I was flying in the snow where it's really cold, the aircraft, as you could see, because you can choose two views, by the way, one view can be outside, the other one inside. Now, when you're looking from outside, you could see the snow on the materials of the aircraft. And then inside, you could see, for example, all the little cracklings on the window of this Boeing 747. It's really amazing. And this is the really awesome thing about Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is that one moment, as I mentioned, you're flying in the snow and then you can choose to fly in the exact same location, either at a different time or you can make it sunny as you want. Or for example, here, I chose to fly in a complete storm. And that's the thing, because in Google Earth, you cannot choose various different weather or seasons in which you are inside of the app. The only thing that you can change is of course the time of day. But there's something about Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, it's just so awesome. The fact that, for example, I'm flying above Nice again in my hometown in the south of France, and it's a complete storm with the lightning going everywhere. I mean, the special effects are absolutely amazing. And I tell you, when you fly high enough and you can get out of those clouds, you really feel a sense of relief. I think the other aspect that's really interesting about Microsoft Flight Sim compared to Google Earth is the fact that Google Earth is very much a solo kind of experience where unless, of course, you're playing at the same time in the same room with your parents or your family or some friends, or perhaps you could also do this, of course, virtually and then cast whatever you see on your screen online so that other people can join you and see what you see. But in Microsoft Flight Sim, you can actually do multiplayer. So everybody, more than one person, can actually have a VR headset on and together you can play. And then finally, I think the biggest difference between Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and Google Earth is that in Microsoft Flight Sim, you can do some really cool acrobatics and you can change your view, of course. So you can look at the plane instead of being inside of the plane. And it's just fantastic to be able to do these kind of things and, you know, it just gives the game another dimension. But I do have to mention something though, is the fact that you can get some pretty, uh, you can get some motion sickness in VR Flight Sim, uh, sorry, in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, much more easily than you could with Google Earth. Now this is because in Google Earth, there is a comfort mode in the settings, which enables you to either see the entire screen in the field of view, or you can reduce the field of view in what you see. So it will be more like of a bubble kind of shape. And then around the bubble, you'll see some kind of lines which is supposed to give you more comfort and less motion sickness. However, in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, especially when you don't really know how to, you know, pilot a plane, you know, these are real world conditions and sometimes the wind is really powerful and it's quite hard to keep the plane together. I use a, for example, Microsoft Xbox S controller and it can be quite hard and twitchy to keep things steady. Perhaps if you have a DAS or some kind of other accessory, it could be easier, but anyway, especially at the beginning part. And if you're going to do acrobatics and all these kind of things, you know, things get very headachy very fast. So it might be an idea just to, you know, drink some ginger or have something with ginger because ginger helps against motion sickness before you actually play Microsoft 
Flight Sim 2020. So in conclusion, if you're looking for a travel app where basically you can see the world, travel around, escape real life and really feel immersed and potentially do this with your friends or your family where you're all together and either reminisce on the places you've been or plan ahead your travel, which you may do after COVID, then Google Earth is more than enough. If you're looking for an app that provides you more immersion where the graphics are much more hyper-realistic, the detail and the buildings are there, the terrain, all these kind of things that provide this level of immersion, which is another level compared to Google Earth, then Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is definitely going to be something for you. Also, of course, if you're an enthusiast or you've always been curious about what it feels like to pilot an aircraft like a Boeing 747 and just feel the roar of that engine in your hands, then I think you're definitely going to enjoy this one. So this section is now dedicated to you, the subscriber. I really want to thank you because some of you went to the links in the description below the like button back to our affiliate Amazon page where you made some purchases. Now we get a little kickback, maybe three, two or three percent or whatever. But you know, after the last six months or seven months after we put them there, we managed to afford to buy this. Now this is not from my money. This is from the affiliates money of the accumulation of the purchases that you made. So thank you so much. Um, you know, we really needed a new mic because this mic keeps breaking and it's just really crazy. So thank you so much. And I'm just going to unbox it to show you. So, oh, so we have the instructions and all that kind of stuff. And you know, this is a hundred US dollars. This is hundred US, that's, that's pretty expensive, right? So here we go. Here's my transmitter. So uh, let me just, there we go. Do that because this one, unfortunately, I stepped on it by mistake. I've dropped it countless amount of times. I basically haven't really, you know, looked after it. And I promise to look after this much more than I did for this one. Uh, and I'm going to start using it from tomorrow onwards. So thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. I hope you had a good Merry Christmas. And also I wish you the best of New Year 2021. See you later, guys.